please rise in spirit or to your feet for our call to worship. We gather together in a time of uncertainty and doubts. Help us, God, to see our questions and open our hearts. Even though we are stubborn and lost, we are searching. Hear our prayers and help our unbelief. May your grace shine on us and open our eyes. Remain standing and join me in singing our opening song, number 519, Lift Every Voice and Sing. The lyrics will be on the screens or can be found in the United Methodist Hymnal.
be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Golson. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, thank you for joining us in person and online. We're so glad you're here. Members of Christ UMC, let us welcome our guests. We welcome you, we bless you, we behold the Christ in you. As we worship today, we'll sing songs of praise, welcome a new member into the family of God through baptism, and explore how God can use our doubts and turn them into a blessing. Would you join me in prayer? God of love and compassion, there are times when we doubt that situations will improve in the world or in our personal lives. Help us, Lord, to put on patience for your work to be done in us and around us. Let us witness your power, compassion, and faithfulness in ways that we have not known before. Deepen our faith so that your light will grow in us as witnesses in the world. We thank you for your mercy and grace. Amen. Okay. Today, it is my honor to present Jack Thornton Jaco for baptism. Amen. 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 I advise you to, yeah, that's good. Come on up, godparents, you too. Everybody up. Are we waking up? No. Okay, you stay asleep the whole time. That's really the dream. Okay. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. I present Jack Thornton Jaco for baptism. Okay, Mom and Dad, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you reject the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And I skipped one. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Great. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, so that he might accept God's grace for himself, profess his faith openly, and lead a Christian life. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian life and faith and include these persons now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. 
Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those through the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured by the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Holy Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness that throughout his life, in dying and being raised with Christ, he might share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Okay, let's try another one. Come here. Come here. It's okay. I got him. I got him. We've done this a couple times. Here we go. I know better. All right. Jack Thornton Jacob, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to get to hold you some more. Actually, it's still my turn. It's still my turn, but I am going to take the book back from then. Thank you. Thank you. Because there's a part that I always mess up, if we're honest. So let's try to do better this time. It is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. Members, oops, hang, oh, oops, sorry, you're good. You can't keep going. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Okay, now it's my turn. Members of the household of God, I commend this child now before you to your care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. As Amen. 
the Holy Spirit wanted to emphasize some things this morning. That's what I'm deciding. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us welcome our newest brother. I'm going to walk around and I'm going to hand them back to you. Good. I'm very proud of you. Big stretch. Okay. Big stretch. Okay, you got this. Amen. 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 Please stand for the reading of scripture taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 28. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand in his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Today, we honor fathers. For our time with young disciples, the music arts and drama team will share a skit called Because You Said So. Father's Day, so we wanted to take a minute to let all the dads out there know we've been listening. Or not. You might have thought we're ignoring you. Trust me. Because you're important to us, Dad. Because you said so. I did all my chores before I played outside with my friends. Because you said so. I do not plug in my stereo, my video game system, my speakers, and my computer into the same outlet. Because well, not anymore anyway, because, because of all the times I blew out the circuit. Because you said so. 
I eat all my peas and mashed potatoes at dinner because I really wanted dessert. Because you said so. I always keep a $20 bill in my wallet for emergencies. Because you said so. I always laugh at your jokes, no matter how bad they are. Because you said so. I toast... I learned how to toast the perfect golden brown marshmallow by holding it over the coals at the bottom of the campfire. Because you've said so. I'm always a good sport even when I lose. Because you said so. I stopped asking why, even though I already asked why 20 times, even though I really wanted to know. Because you said so. I give mom a hug and a kiss and tell her I love her before I leave the house. Because you said so. I always put your tools back just the way you left them. Because you said so. I did not chase the adorable skunk, even though he would make the very best pet. Because you said so. I mow the lawn in life, even stripes, instead of pushing the lawnmower every which way direction as fast as I can go. Because you said so. I made sure to pick up all my Legos because of all the times you stepped on them. Because you said so. I always make sure to play with the new kids so they know they have a friend. Because you said so. I do not turn up the thermostat up to 92, even though I really wanted to play Desert Island. Because you said so. I did not feed the dog the rest of the bacon, even though he really wanted some. Because you said so. I try to look on the bright side and find the silver lining, even though it's sometimes hard. Because you said so. I know that whoever's in charge of the grill is king. Because you said so. I kicked my soccer ball away from the front window. Well, I did. After I kicked it super hard and broke the window that one time. Because I had to do so many chores to pay you back. Because you said so. I say thank you every day at the dinner table. Because you said so. I did all my practice math problems before the big test, even though I didn't want to. Because you said so. And I got an A, so yeah, thanks. I always try to really get to know somebody and not to make snap judgments when I meet a new person. Because you said so. When we go for a hike, I always make sure to find a big walking stick. Because you said so. I look people in the eye when I shake their hand. Because you said so. I told myself I could do it, even when I wasn't sure I, even when I wasn't sure I believed in myself. Because you said so. I make sure to wake up super early so I can see the sunrise and know what it looks like when a new day begins. Because you said so. So thank you, Dad. For teaching us right from wrong. For keeping us safe. For teaching us when it's time to have fun. And when it's time to be quiet and rest. Because without your love, your strength, your compassion, and your are today. And know that whatever we do and wherever we go, We'll always be there with you, just as you are with us for the rest of our lives. For, for, all the, for all that you do for us today and every day, happy Father's Day, Dad. One, two, three. Because, because he said, said so. so.
Good morning. I'm Judy Hopkins, the Director of Lay Ministries and Programming, and I just wanted to um, congratulate and recognize all of the graduates that we have amongst our family at Christ UMC. So as I call your name, if you're present, I'd just ask you to stand in place. And if the graduate is not with us and the family is, they can stand to represent their graduate. Okay? So we'll start with eighth grade. Our eighth grade graduating class is Andon Antoine. Just stay standing up, Andon and Antoine. <laughs> and Anthony Christmas, who graduated from Kan Kanakamak School. Stay standing, okay? And Christopher Hayes, who graduated from St. Stanislaw Costa School in Saraville. From high school, we have Daniel Ruoff, graduating from Piscataway High School. And the grandson of Alonzo and Alfreda Brewster, Kyrie Brewster, who graduated from Hempstead Academy Charter School. Lynn Hartman's grandson, Benjamin Hartman, had, has graduated from Gill St. Bernard School. And Edie Torrey's grandson, Gavin Ananan, <laughs> sorry, um, is graduating from Mountain Lakes High School. Our college graduates are Maritza Rosario, who graduated from Middlesex College with her associate's degree. And not to be outdone, her mom earned a, an advanced degree getting her master's. Olivet Rosario uh, re earned her master's in clinical concentration from, so, sorry, social work with a clinical concentration from Kane University. And we have Dr. Michael Sheldon O2, who graduated from Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School with a degree of MD. If you would, will, will you pray with me? Father God, these graduates have knowledge. Please show them how to use it wisely and to find a way to somehow make the world we live in a better place and to help make life with all of its problems a little bit easier to face. Grant them faith and courage and put purpose in their days. Show them how to serve you in effective ways so their education, knowledge, and skill may find their true fulfillment as they learn to do your will. And may they ever be aware in everything they do that knowledge comes from learning and wisdom comes from you. Amen. Congratulations, graduates.
Thank you, Lynn. He is worthy. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. I'm Lynn Stallworth, the director of music ministry here, the proud director of music ministry here. I want to start by thanking all that have been part of this musical journey this year. That includes the praise team, the sanctuary choir, the cantata, the young people, and of course their parents, the bell choirs, and the gospel choir. And we can't forget the sound booth. We would be nowhere without you. Thank you. The dedication of each of these groups is something to be commended, and I am sure appreciated by more than just me. But there are three people specifically I want to mention. First, Katrina. Katrina is in the praise team, as you know, but I'm not even going to read this. Katrina was one. I said, Katrina, would you like to work with us with the young people? I didn't have to bribe her. I didn't have to twist her arm. She said yes right away, and what a blessing she's been. So thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Secondly, Brittany, Miss Brittany. What a treasure she is, not only to the music ministry, but as you all know, to this church. She is so talented, so willing, and so dedicated. She has worked with the adult bell choir, and I challenged her this year to start the youth bell choir again, and she did it. And, she, and you'll see, she did a fantastic job. Brittany, we love you. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, the gospel choir. What an inspiration to us. We are so glad that you are back. You have fed our soul. But this has been done under the leadership of land. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to have to say that this is land's last Sunday with us. Land, right, no, I got you. Land and Michael are moving to Indiana. So we can't sleep, sneak back here on Sunday mornings. He has, Land has accepted a position, let me get this right, as Associate Director of Diversity, Justice, and Missions for the Indiana Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, right? Okay. I am sure that you will be excited, as I am, to see how God will use him there. But I'm sure, like me, you will miss him also. Land. Thank you. Well, today, happy Father's Day. Whether you are a birth father, whether you are a stepfather, adoptive father, foster father, as well as if you're a grandparent, a grandfather, and to those men who have provided a nurturing environment to our children, we say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice and the wisdom that you share. We thank God for you. May God continue to give you the fresh strength every day for this never-ending loving task. Today is your day. Happy Father's Day. Would you please pray with me? Just as I am, without one plea. Thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, and relieve. Because thy promise I believe. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Amen. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to live in a world where we would not have doubt feeling assured that all will be okay? Is that even possible? What would that take? Doubt is when you just don't believe it. You don't quite believe it. You're just not sure. But doubt is a funny thing. It really could hold you back from reaching your goal. What would it take to get beyond it? Now, when we talk about doubt, we can think about a lot of things. You may think, am I ever going to be able to buy a house in New Jersey? 
Am I going to be able to get that job that I'm qualified for? I don't know if I'm going to be able to provide for my family. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that next big, scary school. What if I'm not a good parent? What if I'm not a good child to my parents? There are so many things that we can doubt, and I'm sure you have things that you can fill in yourselves. But then there are also doubts that are big, like I doubt that our church will ever be stable again, or will we ever be able to get a handle on gun control in this country? Or I doubt there will ever be racial justice in my lifetime. Could we ever be a United Nation again? The doubt, it brings us to our scripture. As a speedy recap, Jesus is resurrected, Mary goes to the tomb, Jesus isn't there, but Jesus meets Mary. Jesus tells Mary, go tell the disciples, I'm here, I'm back. Jesus then appears to the disciples, that is to all but one. He shows them his wounds and talks about the Holy Spirit coming. When he left, I can only imagine what the disciples were talking about amongst themselves. Can you imagine? What would you think if he were there? In enters Thomas. Where was he? You know, there's always one. You know, you're trying to load the bus and there's one still in the gift shop, yeah. right? right? You know what I'm talking about. Or there's one that just kind of wandered away. So maybe Thomas was feeding the goats. Maybe he was tending the sheep. Maybe he was just going for a stroll. Who knows? Bible doesn't say. We just know that he wasn't there, right? When Jesus came the first time to the disciples, he wasn't there. But in comes Thomas. The disciples are so excited. Thomas, you are not going to believe this. Jesus was here. He really was. We talked. He showed us his wounds. He was here. He is alive. Thomas, mm -mm, not buying it. It's not like he thought they made it up. He just had to see it for himself. It's like going to the produce market, right? You want to pick out a pineapple. You got to smell it to make sure it's ripe. Or you want to pick up that tomato and you got to squeeze it or look at the color to make sure it's just the one you want. No Instacart here. You want to be there to do those things. Thomas is like that. So the 10 disciples were like, what? We saw him, we touched him. You know, we're your band of brothers. We're not gonna steer you wrong. But Thomas said, nope, didn't buy it, didn't buy it. So the disciples were thinking and maybe saying, now I'm making this up, it's not in the Bible, just my thinking, you know, what will Jesus think of us if we can't convince you. And then they're thinking and saying, Thomas, what will Jesus think of you for not believing us? Thomas didn't care. But who is this Thomas? Well, he's one of the original 12, one of the original 12 disciples. And he is always known as Doubty Thomas. But his name came, is, came from the Greek in Hebrew word Didymus. Didymus means twin. So that means two sides. And there were two sides to Thomas. One side was the doubting, headstrong, hard-headed side. But the other side was the devoted, courageous, loving side. Nobody gives Thomas that credit, but he did have two sides, just like we can, right? So we can be doubting, headstrong, but that doesn't mean we can't be loving, dedicated, or courageous too. But is doubt, is it bad? Well, it's certainly not thought of in a positive light most of the time. It's, but it's not like Thomas was stuck in his doubt. It wasn't a permanent condition for him. His doubt had a purpose. It was to lead him to a place 
where he really wanted to know the truth. How did Jesus react? Jesus, he didn't reject Thomas's doubt. He didn't condemn or judge Thomas. He wasn't agitated or threatened. He gave Thomas exactly what he needed to bring Thomas to belief. Verse 27 says, put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief, believe. Jesus was kind, he was compassionate, and he honored Thomas's doubt. Thomas was transformed and he believed. An important point to remember here was that in order for God to help us, as he did Thomas with his doubt, we have to have the faith that God can help us with our doubt. Again, in order for God to help us, we have to have the faith that God can help us. So let's talk about two of the doubts that we may have. These are the ones we feel that we may not have much control over. Racial justice. This is one I think it's important to talk about now because tomorrow is Juneteenth. Although it was established as a federal holiday in 2021, it is a day that has been celebrated for many years. It is the day that the last enslaved person in the United States was declared free. It happened in Texas on June 19th, 1865. That day, on that day, the relationship between master and slave was to be changed to employer and hired laborer. We celebrate that, but we certainly should not distort the fact that the mentality of racism continues. Give you an example. Censorship is a form of racism. And in Florida, for example, they condemn efforts to teach Americans about the nation's racial history. In fact, I don't know if you remember the Gorman girl who did the uh, poem for the Obama uh, inauguration. They have actually cut out part of her poem in the libraries in the school because they don't want that part of history to be told. As we think about Juneteenth, President Obama said this, Juneteenth has never been a celebration of victory or an acceptance of the way things are. It is a celebration of progress. It's an affirmation that despite the most painful parts of our history, change is possible. And there is still much work to be done. Ida B. Wells said, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. We have begun this but we do have a long way to go. I still worry about our young black man in college. I still worry about my 30-year-old son coming home by himself late at night. I still worry about that. I shouldn't, but I do. But then I remember God was able to do what he needed to do to bring Thomas to belief. He did it for Thomas, so he can do it for me also. I just need to have the faith. God really can help me out of my doubt. Now, second doubt, the church. Will churches ever be united? Well, in the United Methodist faith, I'm sure most of us know that churches are disaffiliating. That means churches are breaking away from the United Methodist Church. Why? Because we cannot accept that we are all beloved children of God. And because of that, churches are leaving. 
This week, you may have heard on the radio about the Southern Baptist Convention. The Southern Baptist Convention is the largest Protestant group in the United States. They're kicking churches out of their denomination. Why? Because they're ordaining women. Women. Because women are pastors in that church, they are, breaking, they are kicking them out. What's wrong with this picture? Lord, help me with my doubts. But wait, this is Music Appreciation Sunday. We haven't talked about music. Where's the connection? As you know, music comes in many styles and serves many purposes. The variety is so that we can connect in some way with the message, with our feelings, with our hopes and our dreams. I believe that there is a link between music and spirituality. It is the language of the soul. It can soothe your soul or it can stir it up. It is one way to move us from doubt to assurance. When we so joyously sang this morning, lift up your voice and sing, one of the verses, sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. That is about social change. That is a song to stir us up. But then the gospel choir sang, clap your hands. This is a song of praise to the Lord. Clap your hands, all you people. Give thanks to the Lord. Lift your voice and sing a new song to one we adore. He is worthy of all praise. Again, in order for God to help us, as he helped Thomas with his doubt, we have to have the faith that God can help us out of our doubts. What a better way to show faith than to praise him. Now, at the beginning of the song, the Jubilee Ringers played a song, How Can I Keep From Singing? It's a familiar song, but if you don't know the words, one of the verses is as follows. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentations. I hear the real, though distant, far off him that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I he keep from singing? So this is a song of inspiration, a song about maintaining a sense of peace within chaos, something to soothe our souls. And finally, Shalom. You all know the song. This is a song that the Bel Airs will be playing at the end of service. They'll play two verses, the pastor will have her benediction, and then the third verse at their play, we will sing along with them. Watch me, I'll bring you in when you need to come in, okay? Um, but this song, it's a blessing. This is a blessing from one to each other, something that we all need. It simply says, go in peace and in health. In conclusion, when you are in a place of doubt, remember four things. Number one, it's okay to doubt. Jesus didn't mind. He understood Thomas. Nothing wrong with that. Second, doubt can lead to a better understanding. This can be done with the help and the grace of our Lord. Third, if God could walk through this doubting, work through this doubting dis disciple, Thomas, imagine how God can raise us from places of doubt, skepticism, and other struggles of faith. Jesus' response to Thomas transformed him to one who trusted and believed. God can 
And again, using Thomas as an example, and we'll do whatever we need to transform us and make us believers. Fourth, if you need inspiration, if you need to be stirred up, if you need to praise God, to communicate with God in prayer, and know that the love of God is always present. Sing a song. It can help. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that good word, Lynn. God has begun a good work, but has not yet brought us into the promised land. Would you join me in prayer? Holy God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our experiences of doubt and skepticism do not change the reality of who you are. When we find ourselves in a season of questioning, help us not to shy away from our questions but to engage with them honestly so that we might grow in our knowledge and experience of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, you have brought your people out of Egypt, but we find that we are still wandering in the wilderness as a nation. We have not entered into the promised land where someone might be valued and understood and known not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. You have brought us through a land watered with tears, and yet tears still do fall because we know that young men are at risk of being pulled over without cause at risk of violence in the hands of those who have vowed to protect and to serve. We thank you, God, for the place that you have brought us now, but we are still looking for your action. We are still waiting to enter into the promised land. We pray for all the people and places that have been torn apart by violence. We pray that your justice might flow in this country like an ever-rushing stream. May we continue to combat inequality and racism. And when we look at the gap, when we realize that we're in the wilderness, when our tears still fall, may our curiosity May our pain, may our lament lead us into action that we might create the change we wish to see in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you love all of your children. You care for and long to protect and bless all your children. We thank you, God, for giving us earthly fathers, uncles, grandfathers, mentors, and friends who have taught us how to live well and wisely, who have told us to mow the lawn in straight lines and to always carry $20 in our wallet. We thank you, God, for them. We pray that you would bless all men everywhere this day with your steadfast love so that they might be strengthened and empowered to continue to love and teach in your name. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Lord of compassion and mercy, we pray that you would touch with your healing mercies, grace and love, all those that we name before you now and remember in the silence of our hearts.
All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, when we step out in faith, confidently giving of ourselves and our substance, God can do God's greatest work. In your giving of the offering today, let this be a demonstration of your belief and sacred trust that God is your provider, covering every need, lacking in nothing. You can give online through PayPal or Zelle. You can leave something in the basket today as you exit or mail in a check to the church. All of these are ways that we offer thanks and praise to the one who made us. And another is this, by rising in spirit or to our feet and joining our voices in song. Generous God, we have received so many blessings from your hand. Receive and bless all that we offer back to you, body and soul, and put it to work so that all might find life in you. Amen. I invite you to be seated for just a moment. Today we're celebrating Father's Happy Father's Day and all the men who are like fathers to us. So we invite all of our gentlemen here today as you leave to take a special treat with you. Somerset Patriots comes up this Saturday. It's not too late to get tickets. Please do see Elsa. Visioning the next installment is next Sunday after worship. It's a potluck, so bring something to share. And our Vacation Bible School is coming up soon. There's registrations available in the lobby. If you're interested in helping out, uh, please do see our program director. She was the one who was introducing our graduates earlier in the service. And now, it's time for some more music, I think. Right, Lynn? It is time for music. It's time for our Bel Airs to come forward and bless us with a song.
Would you rise in spirit or to your feet and receive the charge and blessing? Dear friends, our doubts aren't the absence of faith. They're our faith, seeking understanding. So don't shy away from the questions, embrace them. Don't shy away from the gap between what God promised and what God has accomplished. For it is in that gap you will find Jesus. It's in that gap that you will find your purpose. It's in that space that God is calling you to live and to love. So go forth in courage and hope and in joy. Go forth with the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit.